All right, so record that. We're recording. Are you the bar? And you can come on with the bar. On the induction lab, does everyone try to take a crack at it? Because I've looked at it a few times and I just, I could not wrap my head around how it was supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's recording, so we'll have hopefully a, a quality recording and then a crappy recording. Or if you've got time after class, we can oh. try and work it out. I have a little bit. Well, actually, I don't want to work today yet. I have some time. Okay. I mean, hopefully it doesn't take What time do we get set? All right. So, we'll try that after. Raphael, the only one brave enough to sit in the middle. Is that is a challenge? No, it, it's just to a, see a God that. That's a long move. It's just, I'll, I'll, I'll move back there. With my hearing, that'll work out great. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me turn the volumes up on this as far up as it will go so I can actually hear Makaya if she asks a question. I just realized the entire half of the class that was up over here either can't make it to class or they dropped out of class. Yeah, they're the loser group. We side. I'm up. the only survivor. I mean, you're in the middle, though, you're, and you're on the left side of the middle. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to sit in the middle back there, but I don't know if I'm just getting old and my eyesight's gotten terrible, so I can sit up here. <laughs> a couple years ago, I had a student whose glasses broke at the beginning of the semester. So, throughout the entire semester, until the last week when he finally got his glasses fixed, he kept saying, what is that written right there? I can't read that. And so it was just basically repeating everything I'd written on the board <laughs> for 15 weeks. <laughs> Awesome. Did he not sit in the front? Uh, no, he, was, he sat in the front, I think, once, but uh, mostly it was just slightly back. It was the, the other room, though, so it wasn't, he couldn't sit that far away, but still, he could see the board very, very well. <laughs> but it made me appreciate his having classes that last week. All right, so, questions? Um, on the induction lab? Yes. I heard you mention something to him. Is there, is there two layers of wires? There's multiple layers. How, how many layers there are uh, with the coils that we that you used, uh, I'm not sure how many layers. The previous ones were so old I could actually pop them partly apart and I could count, but these, I don't know. How, how are you supposed to get the circumference or, or, or the length of one wire in the coil? The length of the wire? Yeah. Using the resistance formula. What do you have to work the, in? The length of a single wire, though. Oh, the length of a, a single coil? Yeah, because it says, it says get the coil and then get the length of the wire. And it says to get L total, use the use the resistance resistivity cross sectional area. So use the. Yeah, so that guy. To here. get the length of the wire. So, in other words, if I. Put the wire off and then stretch it out how far yeah. would it be you're using that formula right there yeah yeah i've got that okay um, and then the length of one coil or average length of one coil if you're yeah. using the average diameter so it's just five times the diameter right yeah that's why and then the number of coils would be that's what i did i just got so many coils like five i i got the length of the wires 25 meters for the thin, and the total number of coils was 500. Yeah, and actually, the specs of the last page uh, so with a smaller one. Yeah. So you're off by with a factor of two. Yeah. I'm actually not that off on the, well, I'm a little bit under on the, the, the large, but. Um, all right. I just I, I went over this like for like an hour just like checking everything so I was like I gotta be off somewhere. I, I did given their specs uh, that were given. I, I thought all right. So what would all the values need to be in order to actually get those specs? And I ended up coming up with some contradiction there where it's not compatible. Okay. All right. I'll just do it as is. 
Uh, again, if you watch the video, you, I had my disclaimer at the beginning that they get great results compared to the former version of this lab. And you, you can't appreciate that, but if you work with Mike Jones, he suffered under the former version. Mm -hmm. That was 10,000% error. Wow, that's a lot better than the other people were getting. Well, <laughs> so 100% so, so error seems it's excellent. Not too bad. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack your. Honestly, your on this test, out. if I get a question wrong within 100% of its range, it'll just be like, that's excellent. Only compared to, you know, you have to compare it to something. It's, it's, well, it's the standard. Yeah, like it within, within 100% as my grade on the test. <laughs> but I, I guarantee you, all of you will be within 100% of a perfect score. <laughs> if I get 200% on the test, pretty yeah, All right. wait a minute, we can go above the... Oh, they also go below the average exact? No, 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 we don't want that. <laughs> All right, so anyway, what was your question, Chance? Did I answer it? What was that? It was something about that lab. It was... Yeah, that's what I was asking, was how many, how many uh, layers of coils, but we oh, didn't know that. Okay. So we're just finding the... We just find the total length of the wire using that, and then... We know how big one coil is, so we're able to just calculate yeah. how many coils there are. Yep. Okay, I didn't know if we were supposed to know a set amount. Yeah, and you're, you're assuming all your measurements are correct up till then. And I had another question. Um, the uh, parallel plate capacitor lab. Um, I, did, I didn't really understand what the analysis was asking, I guess. It said, what is the formula for the theoretical slope dollar sign in terms of dollar sign K, or kappa, I mean, and D in equation four? Um, All right, so in the parallel plate <laughs> capacitor lab, you have capacitance is equal to epsilon naught, or kappa epsilon naught, that's a kappa. Uh, a over D. And if I can put it into Y equals slope X plus B form, then my slope is whatever the, the coefficient of my horizontal variable is, my independent variable. Well, in the first graph, uh, you're doing capacitance versus distance. Inverse, inverse distance. distance. Yeah. I just so, did this one the other night. So, so if I can express C in terms of, since that's my Y and that's my X, uh, I would like to get that formula into the form of C equals something times the one over D plus something. Well, that would be zero. So whatever that is, that's, that's what the slope equals. Uh, so that we actually got a line. If we did it first distance, then the graph would look like that. That's harder to analyze. Okay. Since you're doing over, you're, you're doing everything over distance, then you do one over D, too. Oh, okay, okay, that makes, oh, okay, because it is one over D. Yeah. And the other one is circumference versus area, so I want to get it into circumference is equal to something times A plus, it'll be zero. So whatever that is, that's the slope equals this. So dollar sign is equal to kappa epsilon sub naught. Times A over here. Times A, okay. And A's area. Yep. Okay, so all that is equal to kappa epsilon sub naught. So the slope is equal to epsilon epsilon naught times a, so kappa would be the slope divided by epsilon naught a. Okay, that makes sense. That's what I wanted to put in. I believe if I understood which question you were talking about. That does make sense, okay. You guys have got Thank you. Yep.
shift chat over in case something pops up there. There we go. All right, so Micaiah, uh, if I don't hear you, if you type something in the chat, I will eventually see it. I have a question for um, number eight of the RC Circuit Lab. You ask, uh, what's the phase difference between the current and voltage of the capacitor? And you say that the order of subtraction matters. So um, I know that like for a capacitor, current follows voltage. So do you do the, um, the current minus the voltage? All right, so what you're looking for? it was, this is for the, when you had the RMC in it? Yes. All right, so. Uh, no, 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 sorry, this is actually, uh, let me let me double check. Actually, it might only be just C in the power supply. Okay. Yeah, it's just the capacitor and power supply. All right. All right. So the phasor diagram. Uh, I know that the current's going to be the same for both. They're in series, so I'll draw a current vector or a phasor right here. This would be I for the power supply, which is I for the capacitor. I know that the voltage for the capacitor uh, is, so uh, the current leads the voltage, so the voltage for the capacitor would be here. Because again, these picture phasors is arrows that are zipping around counterclockwise. So that is my voltage for the capacitor, which also should be the voltage for the power supply. There's that only one yeah. here. So the question is, what's the phase difference between? Um, yeah, between the current and voltage of the capacitor. And then you say that the order of, I, okay. really it's so, what, which order you subtract it. Yeah, uh, well this is leading, so this is gonna be a bigger number than that is, so it would be that minus that. The phase of the current minus the phase of the phaser. Okay. If you do it the other way, so it's this way, you should get pi over two. If you do it the other way, you'll get three pi over two. Yeah. Um, and negative. And this is when I said, are you off by pi over, uh, off by two pi? Because if this is, let's say this is pi over six, and this is negative uh, pi over three, that's not degrees. Then pi over six minus pi over three minus negative pi over three gives me pi over two, which is what you'd expect. However, if this is not expressed as negative pi over three, but expressed as positive five pi over three, then if I do pi over six minus five pi over three, I'm gonna get a very much different answer. Yeah. And so this is where you need to sort of think through, sort of picture it, and this phaser is possibly I just need to subtract pi over, or subtract two pi from this because it gets the exact same phaser and do the math at that point. Um, I think for me the only issue is, uh, I guess, what's a good range for what I should like? How do I identify that? Oh, uh, I should subtract by 2 pi or add 2 pi to this value. Like I, I just this, this lab gets pretty decent results. Uh, I, the biggest difference I got was at the very end, I think I was 10% like off somewhere in that range. But anything before that comes out pretty darn good. So, and I know science should not be done this way, but I know the answer is supposed to be around pi over two, so. Try to subtract so you find yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, there's also just sort of picturing where things are on on it. Uh, I, for example, what was the phase of your current? Um, phase of my current was... Phase of my current was negative 2.458 radians. And the phase of your voltage? Uh, 
Um, it was 2.1131 radians. All right, so I'm gonna picture that. I know that this is 3.14. So my current is gonna put me down here somewhere. That's negative 2.458. And my other one is 2. Point, that's 2.1131. So I would add 2 pi to this one or subtract 2 pi from that one. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Is this from one of the labs or not? <coughs> this is from the, the lab. Oh, the AC circuit? Yep. Okay. And another, yeah, because I was looking at it and some of the percent errors, I guess in the case where I didn't have to add or subtract 2 pi, I was getting like super low percent errors, like 2%. And then for these, all these other ones, it was like 199 or 494. Yeah, that is probably off by a factor of 2 pi, or you've got one of your wires was backwards. Okay. I think it was 2 pi, to be honest. Okay. Just, just by the way, that, like for example, even just this, this example, that makes a lot of sense. So thank you. Yep. Other questions? I had a question regarding that. So the the value that you get with the phaser diagram, those are the theoretical, correct? Right. And then the experimental? Experimental, you're pulling off of what the lab test told you the formula were. Because the formula, <coughs> sorry. Voice change, puberty, the whole thing. Uh, the formula it gives you is y is equal to uh, a cosine bx plus c plus d. Amplitude, so this would be the, the peak value. This is the angular frequency. That's the phase shift. And that's an adjustment because nothing's perfect. This ideally this would be zero. Oh, because you just subtract the phase shifts from one another? Yeah. For that part. Oh, okay. When you said it was off by two pi, what do you mean? So, find a marker. Maybe this will work. So that angle right there, let's assume that's a thirty degree angle. So that would be pi over six. It also is negative. It's negative pi over three, so I don't have to do much thinking. That angle is also, if I go in the other direction, is negative five pi over three. Not drawn to scale. Okay. So both of these angles represent the exact same thing. So in the case over here with Pant's numbers, that his phase of I was negative 2.458, and the phase for Y was 2.1131. If I just subtracted those numbers, and did that minus that, I'm gonna get negative four point something. But it should be 1.5 something. Okay. So what I'm looking for is this angle here. And so I would either subtract two pi from this so that I would get that angle and, and then compare it to this angle. Or I would add two pi to this so that I would get that angle and then subtract that angle. That's what I mean. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. And lab press seems somewhat arbitrary about whether they choose to give you the positive angle or the negative angle. So um, is a good rule of thumb, if both of the radian values are positive, um, then you can subtract them, you should get, if they're both within the range of zero to two pi. So for example, no, would, no, no, because if you get pi over three and, and five pi over three, I mean, that looks like you're off by four pi over three, but you're really off by, uh -huh. Two pi over three. Yeah, that makes sense.
right. Well, other questions? Wait. Um, with the with the related to the master set thirty three for the C surface one. Okay. Can you go over finding uh, epsilon sub naught using log cosines? All right. So if you go through the phasor diagram on that. You've got, if I'm recalling correctly, uh, V sub R and then V sub C, I think was down here. Something like that. Okay. That, or which is the same as V sub L, however you want to label it. Epsilon sub naught is going to be the sum of those two. Whatever I get it going across my power supply should be the same gate going across. The, the components. So the sum of these should get the epsilon sub naught. The parallelogram method, that would be epsilon sub naught right there. So if I look at that triangle, I've got a triangle basically VC there, I got VR there, and then I keep changing the size of my phasers here, but epsilon sub naught there. So if I know this angle, then epsilon sub naught squared is equal to vc squared plus vr squared minus 2 vc vr cosine of whatever that is, we'll call it 5, why not? Okay. I feel like that is my answer to your question. Um, I got there. Okay. And then um, it's like the in the lecture from the 20th. Right. Um, we started going down VL equals VR and then. Right, it came up with the relationship between VC, in this case, VC and VR. So you can get VC in terms of VR or VR in terms of VC. Well, we came up with a, I remember from last time, coming up with a relationship between IC and ICON. Okay. All right, so if I have a, wait, do you have a relationship between IC and I? Or you're talking about in the lecture? 